thank you so much for having me, uh, Jory and Courtney. I'm so impressed with what Studio Inc. is doing, supporting mid-career artists over such a actually a relatively long span of time. Um, I was very excited when 21C announced that we were going to be um, renovating a this historic building, the Savoy in Kansas City, because I'd heard for years from my friends who are artists, um, what a vibrant art scene it is. And not only has that proven to be true, um, it's also a really welcoming one. And so I, I just want to say, um, I, I miss being there in person. I'm glad to be there virtually now. And I'm looking forward to um, connecting with a lot of you um, and, and some of you in your studios. I agree that what is most difficult in cities outside of major mo metropolitan areas um, are actually two things. One, it's the commercial gallery, uh, you know, the commercial world. And, it, and then it's that connection with curators in the studios. Um, I hear this again and again in all this in the cities where we are. And um, so I'm really happy to be able to participate and, and hope to bring other curators to participate in this program. Um, a lot to say. Um, so Jory, thank you so much for that, that introduction. I only have one revision, one in that as we have grown now in nine cities with 90,000 square feet of exhibition space, we are uh, borrowing. We do have loans um, included in some of the exhibitions now. And we also you know, lend from the collection, which is an important thing to do because um, one of the goals of the multi, of, of 21C is to create, you know, a, a cre credentialed museum that feels like an opportunity um, for for young and mid-career and even established artists um, to want to be a part of. So what you're looking at on the screen here um, are images of the exterior of eight of our uh, locations, starting with Louisville on the upper left, Cincinnati. Um, Bentonville, which is our only new construction down there underneath uh, Louisville, and the uh, David inspired by Michelangelo sculpture by Turkish artist Serkan Oskaya. Um, that is only, that's our, Bentonville is our only new building. The rest of them are historic renovations and all designed by New York architect Deborah Burke, who is also the first woman dean of the architecture school at Yale University. And then Durham and Cincinnati, and of course, Kansas City and Oklahoma City, Nashville. And on the following page, our most recent um, location and perhaps our biggest city, 21C Museum Hotel Chicago, opened uh, in February only to close again a few weeks later due to the pandemic and just reopened last month um, down there down in, in Chicago. Um, so it when travel becomes possible again and you want to go to Chicago, we hope you'll come stay with us there. Um, so I wanted to give you all a, a sense of the range of the kinds of work that is in, that is commissioned, collected, and exhibited at 21C. And the next few slides are going to show you examples of site-specific commissions. These are um, usually initiated during the design process when we're looking at the renovation of the building. And we're looking for kind of, you know, spaces that take people from one place to another and that don't lend themselves necessarily to Per, to, to put, being part of a temporary exhibition. So the picture on the upper left that you see is of text drain. It's a piece by Camille Utterbach um, that's in the elevator lobby in Louisville, which is a dis, dis, discreet and distinct space. It's a white box. Um, you know, when you're boarding an elevator next to a stranger, it can feel very awkward. But what if you saw a projection of letters coming down and coming to rest on, on your outstretched arm, on your head. Um, these are, it, it's a poem about bodies and language. People start to play with it. It's a great example of um, how a site-specific work can transform not only the space architecturally, but people's experience of the space, social sculpture. So these are all the, um, the, the, the lights that you see on the upper um, right are, uh, in the in the elevator itself, these are by this is was Ivan Navarro's first uh, permanent commission. Um, Ned Kahn from California installed these cloud rings, these puffs of smoke that are visible from both the interior and the outside. And Virgil Marty created this blacklight wallpaper. 
Um, the site-specific piece on the lower right is by Anne Peabody, who is from Louisville, but now lives in Brooklyn, New York, and that's Wheel of Fortune, and that is a that is a site-specific work, but it's not necessarily permanent. Um, it is a tornado cloud with uh, with objects that are silver leaves and affixed to it, um, but it may not be there forever. So um, that's a different example. In Cincinnati, we have a uh, field, field of grass um, lining the stairwell that, that picks up atmospheric data from the exterior and moves these blades of grass around on the exterior of the building is this giant chandelier hanging from a scaffold by Austrian artist Werner Reiterer. You can press a button on the front desk and outside you'll hear the sound of human breathing. Um, the floor projection that you see takes you back to the restrooms along the main hallway. This is Healing Tiles by Brian Knepp. Um, the shapes that you see there will pull apart when uh, anyone walks over it and will heal, as the artist says, back together in a different way for each interaction. Um, when we saw the building in coming together in Cincinnati, so there were two, there, there was this enormous light well created um, that was seven stories high. And so we commissioned Danish artist Astrid Crow to create these very large fiber optic tapestries that are fed with color wheels um, into LED LEDs that change color. And then finally, there's a narrow corridor that we, in which we installed this, um, these globes, if you will, uh, inspired by the Euros Islands off Peru by Agrimanessa on Moros. Bentonville, um, well, we have two, two trees here. And actually that, what is a living tree is also a work of art by Sam Van Aken, the tree of 40 fruit that will eventually become a grafted tree of 40 different kinds of stone fruits. Um, it does, it is working. Uh, and we have served dessert in the restaurant using peaches and plums from that tree. The other tree is by Alexander Arachea. Um, this is his orange tree. That is not an interactive work. The, basketballs are affixed to the ground. On the other side of the Tree of Forty Fruit is um, a work by Dan Rosegar that is interaction. Those fans um, begin to move in different ways when it, this, it in response to sound and movement. This is Flow 5.0. And then air is, um, the movement of air is also part, is part of the theme of the permanent installation in, in the gallery here. It looks like pieces of flying paper. This is Sirkan Ozkaya's um, a sudden gust of wind. And in Bentonville too, the restaurant um, after we were open a few years seemed to call for another site-specific installation. This is Johnson Foster's Buzz Kill. In Durham, um, North Carolina, uh, the lot, the, that building is a historic building by the same architects who designed the um, Empire State Building, Shreve Harmon and Lowe. And because there's, there's so many historic elements on the first floor, the lobby gallery is on the second floor. So we had to find a way of transforming your journey up to the second floor. If you wanna take the elevator, that's fine, but there is a staircase. And now the staircase is lined with these mirrors in which you see these cut out clouds moving 360 degrees and bringing, in, in bringing you up into this, the, the exhibition space. Um, I do wanna to mention too um, the, 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 the white sculpture that you see there with the ceramic bear heads and the neon lights, um, the floral element is made of Yupo paper. This is a detail of an enormous ceiling sculpture that hangs um, in the restaurant. And this is by an artist duo named called Future Retrieval. Um, they, are, they were based in Cincinnati. They've just moved, I think to, Santa Fe, I'm not, uh, somewhere out west, maybe it's Arizona, but they, um, so they were part of our Elevate program originally, which we'll tell you about later. We, they, we borrowed their work for a temporary show in Cincinnati and then got to know them and commissioned them for a major piece. Um, and I might add they went to the Kansas City Art Institute. Yes, so some yeah. of them, that's right, that's right. Thank you, Jory. Yeah. Um, no and then we have another Kansas City based artist who designed our non-binary bathroom signs. Uh, over there, Peregrine Honig. This is, these are the, uh, well, it, I should say that that's a great segue to, you know, when, when 21C, when we need to um, have an exterior, when we need to have something practical, why not make it art? So in Lexington, there was supposed to be a street light on the corner. So we installed Peak Bergman's Totally in Love. 
here, not your usual street light. Um, the uh, Soft Lab, which is a design and art studio in New York, made this Spectra Line installation um, that hangs from the ceiling when you walk in. Again, this is a historic building. Um, this is a McKim Mead and White building. We couldn't have anything that directly affix, affix to the ceiling or to the floor in the entry. So um, this was the solution there that tells you you are in a place of the future of the now. Uh, and in the restaurant, these these are atmos these are acrylic sculptures that are made in the form of atmospheric molecules, and they change color and pattern uh, in response to the local weather forecast. That's called tomorrow's weather. So if you want to know the weather forecast um, in Oklahoma City, which some of you you know may be able to travel to, um, because it's I think it's about. Well, no, it's 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 five hours away. I learned that, I learned I learned that uh, when I was en route between the two <laughs> cities a few years ago. So this is an old Model T. This is a former Model T Ford assembly plant from 1916, um, and it's got about 14,000 square feet of exhibition space on the first floor and expansive exhibition space on the guest room floors, um, which are pictured down here on the lower right. This is a permanent installation by. Artist trio from Seattle, Sutton Barris Color. You always leave me wanting more. There, those arrows are shooting through on all three of the guest room floors. We had to create a, a, a ballroom space, an event space. So um, we did that by commissioning Swedish artist Gunilla Klingberg to create this floor installation, the spinning wheel of life. Um, and so labor and assembly plants, um, the assembly plant um, the is has inspired a lot of the uh, permanent work. Um, this is James Clara's River of Time on the on the upper left. And then you have two images of Matthew Geller's Woozy Blossom, which emits mist and changes color at night. We were planting trees along the exterior sidewalk and of course thought, why not include an artwork? Um, here in, in Nashville, uh, we have three artist suites, one, Young Jake, Adrian Grenier, Sebastian Bremer, which includes a fully functional, um, music recording studio, and then in in the uh, main hallway is this work by uh, uh, Raphael Lozano Hemmer called Bilateral Time Slicer Intermix that uses or hacks surveillance technology to capture your image and split it into mix it with people who are with you and people who come before and people who come after. Um, and feeds that into the public restrooms. And of course, here we are in Kansas City and Jory took you um, through uh, linear sky and showed you the Crystal Palace exhibition in the USA. Um, and we'll just take a quick look at Brad Callhammer's uh, Super Catcher Vast Array, which was a very thoughtful response to the historic murals in the Savoy from 1913, which depict a rather stereotyped image um, of the American West, you know, cowboys and Indians. And we wanted to answer that with both, a, a, you know, a, a reverential reference to the foundational culture of the United States and our first Americans, um, but also with a kind of magic um, that would take out some of the old and usher in the new and a welcoming, create a welcoming space for a whole range of people. Uh, at 21C, we want our, um, sorry, I'm gonna go back. You know, our goal is for the art to help make 21C a place that it welcomes, inspires, challenges, and includes every everyone. We expect everyone who walks through our doors to discover something about themselves and their culture represented, as well as new faces in places that they haven't seen before. Uh, the net, this is another example of a, a project that site-specific installation, now permanent, that was done after 10 years after 21C opened in Louisville. The restaurant proof on Main needed to be refreshed. And uh, so Steve and Laura Lee said, well, why don't we just get some artists? So we were able to commission LA-based artist um, Fallen Fruit, David, David Allen Burns and Austin Young to create a, um, an installation, a four-part installation called The Practices of Everyday Life. Uh, and this had to do with the history of the community going back, well, they, it, it, they go back to pre-colonial uh, pre times. Um, and through to the present. So this is this is the the bar proof on Maine, which is a um, an homage to the LGBTQ community. 
and to love. This is the main dining room, Kentucky, the blood of the land. And the uh, private dining room, which is a portrait of Steve and Laura Lee. Um, so actually, so I'm going to go back for a second and talk about, uh, you know, they, Steve and Laura Lee founded 21C Museum Hotels in 2006 because they had been collecting for a number of years and sharing their collection with people who came to visit them at home. And they saw the value of trying to integrate art into everyday life and giving people greater access. They're like, you know, ha having exposure to thought provoking contemporary art has changed our perspective on so many things and other people, a broader range of people should have that opportunity. Um, and so they didn't want to build a private mu a, a museum or a private foundation. Uh, and they wanted it to also serve to revitalize the urban core of downtown Louisville. And they did some research and found out that uh, the, a business that would do well in Louisville was more hotel rooms. So downtown Louisville, like many downtowns of our mid-sized cities in the United States, had been abandoned in the 80s. And I, you know people were not living down there anymore. It wasn't residential. People had fled for the suburbs. Um, and like many of our downtowns, including, including Kansas City, there's so many beautiful buildings um, that just needed some love, that needed some renovation that could drive uh, economy that could drive civic engagement and that could create greater and broader access to the art of our time. So it was intended to be a hometown project and then investors from other cities, Cincinnati being number what came forward. And, and between 2012, uh, we, when we opened number two, to Cincinnati, to 2020, when we opened number nine, um, it's been a whirlwind and it's it, it's been a lot of fun to um, become, a, become a part of these communities. So now I'm just gonna give you a quick uh, overview of some of our current exhibitions. Um, these are largely drawn from the permanent collection with now numbers about over 3,500 works of art in every uh, medium you can imagine from photography, sculpture, painting, um, film, video, performance, augmented reality, virtual reality. The collection has grown tremendously. Steve and Laura Lee remain committed to growing the collection um, in, in acquiring work for us to curate into exhibitions. It's extremely global. Um, nearly half of the artists in the collection are from outside the US. Um, we believe very much in looking at the human condition from a global and an honest perspective. A lot of the, ex the exhibitions are intended to reflect on the state of the world today and to examine our most pressing issues. Um, it is a, the, the, the collection is uh, over 45% not, uh, female identified artists and, and between 30 and 35% artists of color. So, um, that it's very, very broad. Now, these things are not, um, these percentages are not things that the, that we we try to maintain. It's just because inspired by Steve and Lee, Laura Lee's curiosity about how people live, dream, play, and work the world over, that is what emerges. It includes work by well-known artists, very well-known artists, Gehinde Wiley, Bill Viola, Carrie Mae Weems, down to, you know, emerging artists, from all over the world. So the, the future is female, um, which is currently at 21C Durham, um, which is an exhibition about the persistence of the struggle for equality and the evolution of our ideas around gender and sexuality. Um, includes work by Zoe Buckman and Sia Woolfolk and Andrea Bowers, which you see pictured here. Labor and Materials, which was the inaugural show for 21C Oklahoma City. We aim for the inaugural exhibition to have a connection to the site and to what's going on right now. This was when it was installed um, at uh, 21C Louisville last year, you may recognize the work of uh, celebrated American artist, Carol Walker. Um, uh, and uh, this is Marina Zirkow, who's um, Invisible Oceans More and More is the video sculpture here. This is an exhibition about um, the evolution of labor and work uh, today, and the impact of technology and of immigration policies and a whole range of um, 
of influences. The supernatural is an, uh, looks at how our understanding of nature and landscape um, has evolved to be both equal parts organic and artificial. You can see our colleague Deanna here testing out uh, a virtual reality tour of Bora Bora by Jacob Steenson. Seeing Now, uh, which is currently in Oklahoma City, is an exhibition um, about perception, both physical perception and psychological perception, and what are the forces that are shaping what and how we see the world. Pop stars, popular culture, um, and contemporary art uh, is a, a um, group exhibition about the, um, the alt, two, is two pronged, the continuing influence of pop art and then how pop, popular culture is being mined for contemporary art to address a whole range of issues from identity um, and equity and uh, commerce in the um, today. You can see there's work here. The, the sculpture is by Kehinde Wiley and we have work by Derek Adams and uh, Deborah Roberts here on the lower left um, who currently has a solo show at the Blanton in Austin, if anybody makes it to Texas. So we've seen offspring new generations. The, the group shot on the upper right um, is at our opening where Anthony Guaycalea, who is um, collect, has been collected in depth um, by 21C and was our speaker. Um, all of our events, when we get back to doing them, are open to the public, free and open to the public, um, which I really want to, to emphasize. And here's me and Jory with Michaela Slavid, who's our museum manager in Oklahoma City. Um, that reminds me that I want, and, and here we are, here we are at, at an opening uh, in Cincinnati for Regalia and Resistance, um, Dress Up, Speak Up, Regalia Resistance. And uh, I'm with featured artist Pisa Butler, who gave an incredible opening talk. She has a solo, her first solo exhibition uh, is going, was organized by the Katona Museum of Art and is opening next week at the Art Institute in Chicago. Um, behind her are, is one of her amazing textile works. And we are with Michael Hurst, our museum manager in Chicago. This reminded me that I was gonna mention the structure of the staff for our multi-venue museum um, is there are 18, of us, uh, nine of us are centrally located in Louisville, um, and the and the other nine are uh, heading up our locations, and we all work together. We we've been, I guess, prepared for in some ways for for pandemic working because we've been, you know, we we work remotely, and then we come together um, a couple of times a year when we're changing the exhibitions. Uh, Fragile Figures is a new exhibition in, uh, in, in Nashville, Beings in Time. The work on the left there is by Atlanta-based artist um, Alfred Conte. And that group shot shows you a staff training tour. Um, as your artists, you, many of you are artists, um, I've anticipated that questions about how do we care for the art? How do we keep it safe when we're open 24 seven? Um, and open to the public and are not a traditional museum. We do a lot of staff training. Everyone who works at 21C, no matter what department you're in, you might be working in the restaurant, you might be working the front desk, you might be working housekeeping, is a docent and a custodian. And so we really want to share a lot of information, both about how you care for the, how do you care for the art, what to, what to take note of, if some, and also enough information that they can share that with our guests. Refuge is the current exhibition in Bentonville. The full title is Refuge, Needing, Seeking, and Creating Shelter. And you can see work here from left to right by Carlos Garacoa, Nick Cave, Zach Ove, Anita Groner, and Nomi Safran Hahn, who's the woman in the middle here next to Peregrine, who happened to be in town during our opening. Um, this was the inaugural show in Kansas City. And uh, it, it it was had been something that um, was in the works for two to three years. When when it opened, it was you know the, around the time that the refugee crisis at the southern border was very much in the news. But this show, as it examines both historical and contemporary migrations, both sought and forced, reminds us that this is not a new problem. 
Finally, this we believe is the inaugural exhibition in, in Chicago. Um, this exhibition is about allegiance to belief systems and the cost and consequences of uh, and the divisiveness that is caused by a kind of strict allegiance to creed or country um, that has that is galvan has really uh, galvanized cultures of polarization and divisiveness, not just in the United States, but around the world. There are artists from all over the world in this exhibition as well. Here you can see work by, from left to right by Inka Shonabare, CBE, a Nigerian British artist, Mitch Epstein, an American photographer, Jeremy Dean, American photographer, Sebastian Erasriz, who is from Chile, and uh, Titus Gafar. This is one gallery. This is the main gallery in Chicago. Um, this is a work by um, an artist who was born in the Netherlands and now lives in France. Um, you can see the title there, The State I Am In and the Consciousness um, of a Country's Empty of a Country's Empty Mind. This is all not this is not taxidermy. And this is another work by the same artist. This is painted. Uh, we in every location we have a dedicated video lounge, uh, a space that is only for what now I say art that needs to be in the dark. Um, but really for moving image art. And in Chicago, we are showing Kota Izawa's uh, watercolor animation national anthem um, that debuted at the Whitney Biennial. Uh, this is another important work in the Chicago exhibition, Zecho Vey's Umbilical Progenitor. Kara Walker, A Warm Summer Evening. Al Faro, um, study for a Moss Grill Aquary. So I'm just gonna, uh, the, this we believe also includes a suite of works by um, MacArthur winning photographer Latoya Ruby Frazier. Um, and so now we want to, you know, kind of get down to, to the local. Um, so in every 21C, there is space designed on the guest room floors when people get off the elevator for temporary installations of works on loan from local and regional artists. When we were opening 21C Cincinnati, I had to confess that even though Cincinnati is only an hour and 15 minutes from Louisville, I didn't know that artist community well enough. And I thought there's gotta be a way that we can, you know, install and support the work by local artists from the minute we open the doors. We don't want to have our spaces and also, you know, introduce visitors, introduce our hotel guests to the work of artists um, from that community. And so that, and, and, and we, um, you know, there have been a number of instances where 21C has acquired work from this program and or guests have asked about acquiring work from, uh, from those artists. 21C does not get involved in any kind of, any part of the commercial transaction, but we will put, you know, interested guests um, in touch with the artist and or their gallery. So Jory, do you, do you want to just uh, take us through? Um, yeah, well, your first picture here is a, um, I believe Patty Carroll is, yes. is now an extended studio member at Studio Zinc. So she finished her three year residency and then chose to extend. Um, so Patty Carroll, Madeline Gallucci and Casey Whittier were, um, here's Madeline Gallucci's installation. Uh, yep. Go back one. Um, were our very first Elevate artists opening day. Um, these pieces by Madeline Gallucci were painted there on site um, which is bittersweet. They're so amazing, but yet at a certain point I had to paint over them, um, which is very sad, but uh, she knew that was, that was the agreement going into it and was happy to kind of do this um, fun, sporadic, you know, almost feels immersive because of the massiveness of, of the paintings. Um, yeah, and it was a really creative approach. I mean, that's the thing about Elevate. You can, you know, you can have an artist look at the space and respond to it Either with existing work or to make something on make something on site. Right. Um, it can be an opportunity to experiment. Yeah. Um, and then the next photo there we have on the right Casey Whittier, ceramic artist here in town. She does teach at the Kansas City Art Institute. And then Jillian Youngberg, 
um, on the left. And this, this is a really interesting little, I call it the sculpture nook um, because it's this space on the second floor that's a little bit tucked away. So it's, it's um, as you're venturing through the floors of the hotel, you kind of get this, this gift as you're walking through the space. Um, and it just really suits itself for installations of this, of this sort. So. Yeah, so that's, you know, uh, when when I'm working with, with my, you know, colleagues at, at the at headquarters in Louisville on the planning for renovations, and there are these space, I'm always looking and my, you know, and my colleagues always for spaces that, you know, might call for something, but I don't know what. And so the museum team, we raise our hand and say, oh, let's at least plan to make that space um, you know, usable for art. So let's plan for lighting, let's plan for the guardrails, and then we'll see what we can do with it. We can open it up to, to artists. Yeah, yeah, great. Here we have um, Jessica Wall. She is um, currently not living in Kansas City, but did um, attend school here and um, lived here for an extended period of time. So we do take in artists that have a connection to Kansas City, um, but maybe are, and maybe are still regional. Um, so we can stretch out a little bit beyond um, just the Kansas City Metro. Right. So we've got a quilt piece there and some, some collages. And so I wanted to just show you all examples of how it varies from different building to different building. In, uh, in Durham, these are actually vinyl wallpapers. Um, Nell Fortune Greeley, our museum manager there, has worked with artists um, who want you turn their imagery into vinyl wallpapers because this is unprotected space. Um, and so these are the current, some of the current in, uh, installations that you see in Durham. Also in Durham, we extended the Elevate program down to us. There's a gallery uh, that stands on its own in the lower level. This building was an old bank. And so we call there, we retained the old bank vault and next to it um, is just a gallery space that Nell has been able to program with lots of different wonderful artists. This is Kennedy Carter who is a 21 year old photographer. This was her show about a year and a half ago. Um, after this show was installed her work was featured on the cover of cover of Oxford American last summer. She was commissioned by Vanity Fair to photograph um, the squad in Congress, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and her colleagues. And this month, her photograph of Beyonce appears on the cover of Vogue magazine. Um, these are some other, this is the same space with uh, the, a range of work. This is um, Bill Thielen, who is a Durham-based artist. This hotel theory, William Paul Thomas, disrupting homogeny. And currently, um, this is an installation by Stacy Kirby called Civil Presence. Um, she does activate the space by uh, being artist in residence. Um, a few, uh, she's done it a few times, maybe four times a month. Uh, she was there on election day, engaging visitors who want to come talk to her about their civil presence and their participation in our democracy. He, this is in Lexington, another uh, Elevate program in a gallery that's on the first floor. Um, the, um, um, the textile pieces are by Crystal Gregory, who teaches at the University of Kentucky. And she worked with a troupe of dancers to create a series of performances, the event, uh, event of a thread. Uh, pulling back out, bigger, you know, we love to collaborate with other museums and institutions. Um, this is an exhibition that I co-curated with Stephen Maticio from the Contemporary Art Center Cincinnati a few years ago. This was the first solo show in the United States for Brazilian artist Alvaro Afonso. It was in both spaces at one time. 21C shares a wall with the CAC, which some of you may know was Zaha Hadid's first uh, commission in the United States. And the exhibition was in both spaces at once with a site-specific 
um, project on the exterior linking them. Last year, um, Miranda Lash, who's now a curator, senior curator at the MCA Denver, was then contemporary curator at the Speed Museum in Louisville. Um, we had both seen uh, Inga Shona Barre CVE's installation at the Cleveland uh, Front Triennial, the American Library. Um, it was really about immigration and migration and the history of it and responses to it in the United States. It's these books you see and thought it should really, it was an important work to bring to Louisville, Kentucky. So we then curated, co-curated a, a, um, an exhibition of his work drawing on our collection. collection. Right now in Louisville, <clears throat> you can see this exhibition, Bimbota, Still Life with Discontent, um, which was a, a collaborative project with the North Carolina Museum of Art. Um, and there, um, we, this debuted in Durham last year at both the NCMA, which is in Raleigh, and in Durham at 21C. And uh, most, of this, most of the works in this exhibition came all the way from South Africa. This was uh, four years in the making. We have a full color catalog um, and their um, local collector, Sharon and John Hoffman have generously loaned one of their Boto works to the show. So we hope to bring it to Kansas City uh, next year. And this is an image of a site specific installation. Okay, so I think maybe I was gonna talk about some programming, but I think I should stop yeah. and check in with you, Jory and Courtney, and see how we're doing on time. Yeah, we have about eight minutes. I did want to open it up. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free to enter them in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we can kind of answer some. I started to answer, Jack Holland was asking if Deborah Burke is still involved in any of the design for the new properties. I know she did Kansas City. Was she involved in Chicago? Yes, actually, she was she was involved in Chicago before it became 21C. The site of 21C is the former James Hotel, um, mm -hmm. and she she designed that as well. Um, and so she yes, and it was a challenge because um, it, you know the lobby was narrow, and so she they opened it up and moved the stairwell and created it's hard to see from the pictures um, enough space. She knows the collection well enough. This is what I, you know, she knows, she knows the kind of, she knows enough about contemporary art to know that no matter what, she's got to give the spaces some flexibility and um, we love her aesthetic. So, yes. Great, great. Um, let's see what else we have here. Well, I wanted to jump in with a question since I don't think I can type it in the Q&A, but, okay. um, while you've been talking, Alice, I've noticed that um, when you talk about the property, that's almost a part, an artwork, the way that you speak about the properties and even jewelry down to the tile and how incorporated it is into the overall vision of the museum. Can you talk, speak a little bit more about that? Oh, yeah, it's an, um, well, yeah, it's amazing um, how historic renovations can, kind of spur new revelations about contemporary art, right? So we think very, especially with the site-specific commissions, we think very thoughtfully about what do we want that interplay to be? Um, you know, when, when, when you have a historic element like a tile floor or like those murals in the Savoy, um, how do we indicate to people what kind of transformation is taking place and what artists would respond well to that? So that's, that's, that is um, one of the, you know, more exciting and things to work on because we get to work so intimately um, with the artist who's doing it. And, um, and to your point, I would say that, you know, a recent, well, a strong example of that would be both like the o Oklahoma City, you know, that it was a warehouse building. You think about what went on there and the space lending itself to certain kinds of work and certain kinds of exhibitions, right? Like labor and materials. Um, the McKim Mead and White building in Lexington has so many Beaux-Arts details and they're, they look, somehow the presence of the new within the old highlights the distinctiveness and the meaning of each rather than takes away from. 
um, those those details become really important. If it, you know, ceiling is um, there's a what you know the details and the marble and the and the and the materials and we think about what those materials meant when they were first used and how can we use contemporary art to then offer a new lens to the past. Does that answer your question? And yes, and I I even think about when I had tours around the Kansas City Hotel of the doorways um, were even kept, which ones were original um, based on the paneling and-, and Oh, that, right. You know, yeah, yeah. Just, like making sure that you, it seems that there's an attention to detail that's maintained from beginning to end that is applied to the, the buildings, but also to the collection and how that- Yeah, and I think, well, that, that raises another point is that, you know, um, the founders, and the company leadership is very committed to sustainability. If we can reuse materials, you know, we want to do that. Um, it, it, it is about preserving what can be what can be preserved, and then and then using art to to maybe transform, you know, our perspective. How has the response been to the guests that have stayed in the artist rooms? That have you, are you compiling the recordings and? Oh, I, well, I didn't show you and I wish I had, I didn't show you. We have a, we have a, an artist suite in Louisville. That was the first one by Freeman and Lowe. And it's, it was this guest suite on the lower level. Like no other rooms were down there. It didn't have any natural light. And, um, and these artists, Freeman and Lowe transformed it into something called a sleep in the cyclone. And I had no idea, right, whether people would really like it or not. Um, the ceiling looks like a geodesic Buckminster Fuller dome, and there's all sorts of references to psychedelic culture in there. And I didn't, you know, I thought, well, if no one likes it, we'll have it open for an exhibit. And um, I can't ever get in there because it's it's booked all the time, which is great. Um, it ranges, you know. Um, people in Nashville responded really well to the sanctuary, of course, because it's the the front room is a music recording studio, and then the bedroom recreates Sebastian Bremer's artist studio in Brooklyn. Um, I think, uh, but but you know, I think that um, putting the emphasis on art in public space is is also important right because we want people to to experience that with one another and then um you know the room the regular rooms are beautifully designed by deborah burke to offer you um a little bit of respite but you can still continue to discover art even if you're not staying in an artist suite by simply turning on your television because the default channel in all 21c rooms is our art channel which we program with mostly with our own content, videos and films from the, that are related to the current exhibition. And then we have a whole series of documentaries and interviews that we conduct with our artists. These are short form, three to six minutes, and you can hear from the artists directly um, on the art channel. So that's a whole nother portal to another world of art that's uh, in everyone's room. Well, and then to continue the discussion along that lines, the idea that what you are doing is a museum in a hotel. And then when you think about the behaviors or how people engage traditional museums, when you go in through the door, you're in a museum and that like rigid space with your hands behind your back, because you're not, you're not supposed to touch the artwork at 21C either, but there's not that- um, There's that, not that velvet rope. Yes. Right, there's not that, yeah. Yeah, there's not that velvet rope. You, you don't have to have a certain amount of, knowledge um people come in who are you know we hope that our goal is to curate the exhibitions and have programming that appeals to both people who are arts professionals all the way down to people who who say oh i, I i've never seen you know I, I don't expose myself to contemporary art um and you know i think that art appreciation can come equally through pleasure as it can through pedagogy and we want to offer all of those experiences. There is no demarcation between hotel space and museum space. 
which you'll know if you've been there. And there is no kind of psychological demarcation um, between, you know, hotel guest and visitor. Um, we do organize programming and tours and things like that, just like any museum would. Um, but but we, we loosen up, we hope that the atmosphere is one um, in which the art and the artists are taken seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously so that we can actually truly broaden access and appreciation for the work of living artists. And I see in the Q and A there is an open about how, how the collection is curated. And you've mentioned already in the talk that it's um, a private collection that the museum is from, Steve, right? Well, but yes, 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 it is a, technically a private collection, but, but the collectors don't take, they, they don't take a private um, approach. But I mean, they are buying the work, but with the intent of it being publicly seen. So this is a public mission. Um, and they buy from artist studios, from galleries, from art fairs. Um, we, we used to go to a lot of art fairs. And when we are together, we are constantly talking about what exhibitions are still traveling? What exhibition do we want to make the inaugural show for, say, St. Louis, which is our next, which will be since uh, 21C number 10, um, which we're already beginning to think about. And how, and, 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 and what can we, you know, what is needed? What are the gaps that we can fill? Um, the generosity and the vision is incredible. Yeah. I mean, well, often things come into the, we uh, often acquisitions will go straight to a traveling show. Um, and, you know, without ever, without, it, they don't, not, not everything stops at their house first, <laughs> which is, you know, really amazing. Yeah, generous. Well, I think we've run out of our time. Um, I did, oh, what, what building in St. Louis will be renovated? It's the former YMCA in St. Louis. Is that, do I have that right, Alice? Yes. Great. Yeah, I'm uh, so I hear rumors that there will be a pool. <laughs> there is a pool. I don't know if we, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it, this building is fantastic. Like the, the main gallery is the former gym and there's a running track that hangs from the ceiling. I'm already thinking about what kind of crazy things we could do with that. Um, there is a, a beautiful wooden, wooden bottom pool. So we'll see, we'll see. I see a question in the Q and A I love how innovative the collections are for the hotels and shows inside the hotels. Do you have committees or advisory panels that exist you in selecting the work? Um, so, as I said, I have a team of 18 brilliant people like Jory, um, who let me, who share with me not only the artists that they know in their communities, but you know who they're interested in, what they're seeing online. And we're constantly in conversation about what could work well in this traveling exhibition, what we don't, what, what could work well as a site specific project. And then I share that with, um, you know, with the collector, the collectors, the founders are still very, very much involved. Um, and, and then we, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a much, it's a different kind of process than what you would find uh, in the in the museum, but I think um, we've got a lot of sharp eyes and ears out in communities across the U.S. that are um, acting as an ad hoc committee, if, if if you will. Well, thank you, Alice. We should probably wrap up here and let people get back to their evening. But thank you for joining us. Any of the links that we posted in the chat box, I will be sending an email out as well as a link to the recording of um, this. So if you're wanting to share it with anyone, feel free. Um, and of course, you can always email me back and ask any questions that maybe didn't get um, asked tonight. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Jory, I just want to jump in and read a comment from a Louisville artist. Uh, there's no demarcation between the local artists in the community and the better known artists in the world. 21C provides many opportunities for all of us artists. I just wanted to say that because I, I want to wrap up the evening by saying I cannot, I, I've looked at um, the websites from Studios Inc. and I'm so impressed 
um, and intrigued by the work of so many of your artists, and I can't wait to get to know some of you better in the near future.